Board of Education, June 10, 2019, meeting to order at 7 o'clock p.m. Members present are David, John, uh, Jennifer, Kenny, and Susie. Uh, it's time we move on to approval of minutes from the May 13, 2019, meeting on pages 1 through 9. Hotel reimbursements 522, 23, and 24. That was for the professional development that goes along with summer school. Uh, 525 was for a laptop and screens of upgrade in technology for the central office. the new chairs in the boardroom the uh, the ugly green ones had eaten me away for four years <laughs> and so we uh, went ahead and updated and upgraded those chairs so that they all match and to this point none of them have stains on them so we're very very uh, proud of those so, um, 529 is uh, classroom supplies for Tracy Hurst that's uh, 412 money um, 530 uh, Dennis Wright is lodging he's at a, a transportation inspection class so as now all three of our uh, guys that work at the bus barn uh, are also certified to do bus inspections so that gives us uh, we, we know that the people that are looking at the buses and everything are trained to uh, really do the best job and uh, 535 and 36 um, those were summer school trips. We were required to take some summer school trips, and we had initially planned on going to the Batfish, which was free of charge, the okay. Gathering Place, which was free of charge, and the Spiral Mounds, which was free of charge. Oh, All right. three of which were closed because of the mm -hmm. flood. So uh, the, the effects of that never seemed to end, but uh, we did manage to get the kids into the, to that. Um, and we've got some summer payroll on the uh, next page and um, on the building fund page uh, Arvo Enterprise we did a, it was it's been several years since we've done a complete refinish of our gymnasium floor so there will be new graphics and everything we usually just sand down the top and refinish and uh, we tried to do this last year and we just couldn't make the scheduling work so uh, we uh, we got two bids, but the uh, the other company that we went that we considered, they did the refinishing last year, and we really weren't pleased with the refinishing. They they came back three different times, and they never got the bushes out. Uh, Arbo is probably does more than anyone in the state of Oklahoma, and they'll get it done before school starts. And then the uh, sound panels, uh, we're trying to redo the walls and the. Uh, high school auditorium. I don't know if y'all looked at them or not, but they look really bad. And so we're in the process of helping the acoustics in there as well as uh, updating and upgrading our uh, high school auditorium. So, any questions there? I'll make a motion for the accounts. Second. Motion made by David. David, seconded by John to approve the encumbrances as listed. David? Yes. John? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Yes. This time we move on to other financial reports, pages 10 through 28. You can see on the gasoline report, uh, Mr. Stamper pulling that big truck on the way to Washington, D.C. went through a few gallons of gas. That uh, we were, they had a great trip and everything came, everyone made it back safe and sound with no issues, and we're very proud of our, of our band. Um, on the financial end, uh, we started the month with. 
Uh, we brought in $899,228.76, uh, brought us to a total uh, cash available of $3,735,251.70. We had warrants of $1,886,763.59. When you do that summer payroll with those all three checks, it just uh, balloons in a hurry. So. Uh, uh, we had an ending balance of $1,848,488.11. Uh, outstanding warrants of $326,756.31, leaving us with $1,521,731.80. Going over to the building fund, you can again see that we've, uh, even with the uh, two encumbrances that we talked about earlier, our building fund uh, is done very, very well this year and we've uh, been able to build it back up to the, the point which we were uh, trying to do at the end of the year. And child nutrition has uh, dipped a little bit. Uh, we still don't have, still have trouble getting some collections on that. Uh, we're working on it, but uh, at the same time, we've not gone to alternative meals or anything to draw attention to those students who uh, are not able to pay. And so uh, as long as we can keep keep paying the bills and, and uh, all, all those things, then I think we're, uh, we're still doing a good job in child nutrition. Any questions there? I do want to... Uh, General fund expenditures, again, the payroll is really, really big this month. And also you might look at our bills for uh, this month compared to last month, or same month last year, we've, uh, we've paid a lot more. Uh, and you'll, you'll see that our cash forward at this time is down $254,436. <coughs> But if you look at the bottom of this screen, uh, there's $187,000 and some change that we pay that we had not paid last year that we've already gone ahead and paid. I've tried to get everything paid down with, with me leaving and everything, I'm trying to get everything paid in advance. Uh, also, last year we had received our $68,000 for summer school at this time. We have not received that yet. It, the Choctaws are good for it. I have no doubt about that. So you just throw those three items in there, not including, uh, we recently filed a lot of claims on federal programs. So we're still going, uh, all of our projections already end up at least where we started the year, probably above where we started the year. But, yes, sir, come on in. Sorry. Thank you. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Bye. See y'all. You're always welcome at board meetings. Just so you know. Okay. <laughs> what in the world do I do? Like I said, this is this is a timing thing. It's not a money thing. Uh, we're still, as I said, projected to finish the year where we started or in better shape. So, any questions on any of that? invites public comment at this point in the regular meeting. A, comments concerning agenda items. No one present for that. B, other comments in accordance with policy BED-R. No one present for that. Um, move on to information items, superintendent's reports. I just wanted to discuss a couple of things that we're working on. Uh, again, kind of like the chairs. Uh, this is the start of our problem at the high school parking lot and uh, I've, I've gotten one bid on that we could not get the second bid uh, turned in what we're going to do is first before we start working on the parking lot is 
we're going to come over here and build a place for our dumpsters so that the trash trucks don't have to get on our parking lot. Uh, we don't know how much they weigh. I'm sure they weigh a whole lot more on rainy days than they do on dry days. And so our first uh, first thing we're going to do, and like I said, I haven't gotten a second bid yet, but the two projects that I'm going to talk about, you can add them together and they're less than $10,000 already. So, uh, but I did want to, we're, we're going to, to come over there, build a place for our dumpsters where we can put a fence around them and keep them hidden. And the trash trucks will never have to pull on our parking lot. And then we can, uh, that'll be phase one and then we can come and we'll also run a much longer tin horn to make sure that we're getting the proper drainage <coughs> all the way down the hill. Second thing is this is on the south side of the football field and we're going to uh, put a tin horn and a gate and a drive through there and uh, this was Another one of Peepo's good ideas is if we can park the ambulance and the fire truck there during football games, then if they have to leave, we don't have to worry about them accidentally backing over a student or something because when they park on the other side between the home side and the concession stand, there's a lot of people. It's a very congested area. And this way they can park and they can come and go without us having to worry about any traffic flow from participate or spectators at the games so uh, there'll be a tin horn and and it will be uh, concrete and so that's kind of what we're looking at we'll put uh, two nice gates up and it'll make it a much safer situation and, and hopefully we we appreciate the ambulance showing up all the time it's I always feel better when they're there but sometimes they do have to leave in the middle of the game and it will make that much more accessible. So, any questions on that? <coughs> you know, uh, as far as items for information, I just tell you all I appreciate you all and uh, thanks for everything. And for just uh, you, you have a good person hired, so. Things are good. Things are very good. Now on these projects here, they will not be completed by the end of this month, correct? Yes, sir. They will be completed yes. by the end of this month. Yes. I mean, when you said you had to get another <coughs> bid or something, and I'm wondering about on that one, if you want to have that time to do it, shift it over. No, we're going to get it done. Okay. We're going to get it done. Okay. <laughs> The, 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 fir sure. the, the first bid came in at a price that we can we can move on. Okay. Uh, you know, if the other okay. person doesn't want to get, I tried to have them both by the night and just okay. couldn't get that second bid. But, but no, it's, it's ready to go. Okay, it's ready to go. Mm. All right, are we good? <clears throat> this time we're going to action topics. Action topic, a consideration of second semester attendance waivers. Uh, pages 29 to 31. Again, uh, Mr. Morgan and Mr. Stout do a good job working with parents and students and I just want to caution you that not to mention any names because that would be confidential, but if you have any questions, uh, we, we could always do that. But uh, they do a great job working with the parents and the students to give credit any time they can. And uh, I am more than convinced anyone that is not receiving credit, uh, there's a legitimate reason that that's the recommendation of that committee. Make a motion to approve the recommendation of the Second. Motion made by John, seconded by Jennifer to accept the, <coughs> the second semester attendance waivers. Uh, John? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. Kenny? Yes. 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 Action topic B, consideration of workers' compensation insurance for the 1920 school year, pages 32 through 34. Again, uh, we've been with OSAG for a long time, and uh, it gone up no, it's gone down actually. Uh, but we did have to file a claim this month. We're glad we got this in before we got all that filed, so it may actually it may go up a little next year. But they've been very good with us, and uh, like I said, um, 
it's a fair solid company that really helps works with schools specifically and um, we get a member dividend as well as we've been able to get the, the discount as well but I can't promise you that for next year but I would definitely recommend staying with the Oklahoma School Insurance Group. I should make my Kenny say if I make it to uh, stay with OSAG for the workers' compensation insurance for the 1920 school year. Kenny? Yeah. David? Yes. John? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Action topic C consideration of property, liability, transportation insurance for the 1920 school year. I'm sorry I did not have copies for you all. Um, I just got the quote in right before we started. Again, it's this year, it's the same as last year. We have two companies that quote, uh, the Oklahoma Schools Insurance Group, or OSIG, and their agent is Bill Cox from here at Stigler. And um, their quote is for $100,577. Our current carrier is uh, Jordan Barnett Agency with Oklahoma School Risk Management Trust. And this is the fourth or fifth year we've been with them, maybe the fifth year we've been with them. Um, their quote is for $122,327. $122,327. And again, just as last year, the significant differences in these two policies are number one roof replacement any roof that's over 15 years old OSIG will replace at actual cash value O smart will replace at cost of replacement so when you look at the size of buildings we have the number of roofs that we have uh, that's a significant difference Take the elementary school roof, for example. We know we've got 17,000 square foot of roof there. At replacement cost or actual cash value, it can, it can go either way. Uh, the other thing is um, the comprehensive liability insurance, which is what covers the uh, board uh, for O Smart. It's $2 million. For O Sig, it's $1 million. Those are the, the the deductible on flood is uh, five thousand with OSMART, fifty thousand with OSIG. I don't see that as being a real uh, decision maker either way for us. But uh, we went with OSMART last year, right? Yes. It was the same thing. It was the same. Was higher, was higher Oh, it's about 10,000. That's last year. We're at 22 now. We did not. It's been a good year. Well, this is really quick because years ago, well, it was always cheaper. And it's, it has. It. Like I said, the only deer, the only. <coughs> If you went five years without a significant roof claim, it would probably even out uh, one big roof claim. I think you would eat up that twenty-two thousand quickly. That's so the, what did you say the percentage was on the fifteen year? Old? On fifteen year, OSIG will do actual cash value. All of our roofs are older than fifteen, right there. Except the new one we put on the middle school yeah. cafeteria. Uh, O smart will just do total replacement. <laughs> it's not that old. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do it's not that old. <laughs> okay. 
but uh, like I said, it's uh, I guess that's what insurance is or risk assessment. And that's what we have to do on this deal. Is uh, weigh the odds. It is, but they would now. OSIG will not attach a rider so that you could compare apples. That that's not an option. I'm asked. Five years, you get another hundred grand. You know, if you well, this past next year, maybe last year was ten, this year's twenty-two. Yeah, it, it goes up there. I'm gonna say no. We've been with it. You know what? Especially if we're not having planes. Yeah. Either way, if it goes up any more than that, I think. Motion made by Kenny, second by Jennifer, uh, to uh, go with OSMART for our property liability transportation insurance for the 1920 school year. Uh, Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. John? Yes. David? Yes. And says yes. Action topic D consideration of renewing our membership of Oklahoma OSSBA for the 1920 school year, pages 35 through 38. I'll second that. Yeah. John, yeah, and David. David. Yes. Motion made by John and second by David to renew our membership with OSSBA for the 1920 school year. $9,600 a year. Uh, John? Yes. David? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Action topic E consideration of renewing our policy maintenance service subscription with the OSSBA. For the 1920 school year, pages 39 to 31. 41. I like this as opposed to having to call an attorney and get a sample, and uh, they cost a little more than just uh, calling OSSBA and say we would like some examples of a particular policy. Uh, you're, you're limited to 12, but I would be surprised if you'd make more than 12 policy changes in one year. And some, but the way it is where there's not an additional charge, you may just want to compare your policy to an so updated policy. That. Yes, we have. No. And so it, uh, I, I like the service. Our policy maintenance service is created with
expense as far as uh, what they charge a year, $600. And uh, when it comes to the organization that will be in Oklahoma City fighting specifically for rural schools, they are the one. COSA, have, COSA represents uh, large and small. OSSBA represents large and small. And then their conference that they put on in October. It's a good time at the start of the school year as you're moving forward. And it will, they do, uh, it's probably one of the most useful conferences that you can go to as well. Orals puts that on? Yes. Not, not the OSSBA, they put yeah. one on just for administrators. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Make a motion we renew our membership with the Orals. Second. I should make my John second by Doug to renew our membership in the Orals Association of Oklahoma school year. John? Yes. David? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Kenny? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Action topic G. Consideration of renewing our membership in the Oklahoma Technology Administration Administrators Association for the 1920 school year, page 44. This again goes hand in hand with our project Lead the Way and our, uh, what we do with Career Tech and in our technology class. It's a, a very nominal amount. Remember, if you don't, it's okay. I have to look every year. We get our high school, the high school gym, and the middle school PE building. Uh, they all come, their gas is provided straight from Center Point. And you can see that there were two months that the rate was actually higher with Center Point, but throughout the course of the year, uh, they saved us $2,218.16 with the uh, in savings and purchasing our gas straight from the deal. That's still center point. They changed all the fuel stuff to Hague. Yeah, this is probably the fourth time it's changed since yeah. I've been here. Yeah. Name the same. And I've never gone to the golf tournament in Oklahoma City, which I mean in Kansas City, which they've invited me to every year. So I'm going to record there. <laughs> Make a motion to remove our gas cell transportation agreement. Second. I should make my Kenny second by David to uh, renew the gas cell and transportation agreement with Center Point Energy Services Retail LLC for the 1920 school year. <coughs> Kenny, yes. David. That was John. Oh, John, I'm sorry. John. Yes. David. Yes. Jennifer. Yes. And Susie, yes. Action topic I, consideration of bids for hanging of the Connard land for the 1920 school year. We have two this year. Do you know? Yes. Brian Snow would like to place a bid of five hundred and two dollars. Research from previous years. Make motion go with a high bid. Second. Five oh two. Yes. I should make my John second by David uh, to accept the high bid of five oh two. Uh, 
$502 for the Hattie and Connor Lane for the 1920 school year. John? Yes. David? Yes. King? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. 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 Action topic J, consideration of the following E-rate policies. Except, number one, acceptable computer network, internet web usage policy, pages 47 through 59. And number two, E-rate record retention and re re procurement policy, page 60. There are no changes from the previous year in any of these policies. They're the same as they were last year. Motion made by Kenny, seconded by Jennifer, to accept the e rate policies, number one and number two. Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. John? Yes. David? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Action topic K, consideration of open, of open transfer report. Open transfers for the 1920 school year, case 61. These are, an open carries from year to year, so these are the new open transfers that have been applied for this year. They've been through the, the uh, principals, and uh, everyone is in agreement that we should accept these students. I will say that because of our numbers in special ed that we're not currently approving any special education transfers at this time until we make sure we've got enough room for all the kids that we already have. Make a motion we approve the open transfers as listed for the 1920 school year. Motion made by John, seconded by Jennifer to accept the list of open transfers for the 1920 school year as listed. John? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. King? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Action topic L. Consideration of contract to provide alcohol and drug testing services for employees for the 1920 school year, pages 62 through 64. Okay, we've been using uh, Alpha Drug Testing, the local drug testing company for our employees. Uh, they are, on this, in this particular instance, they are a little less expensive than Precision, and they've done a good job. We've had no problems with Alpha for drug testing our employees. They did the student also? No, Precision did the student. Is it separate bits? Yes. I make a motion to approve out the drug testing for our employee testing. I'll second. Motion made by John, seconded by David to uh, stay with the uh, alpha drug testing for the alcohol and drug testing services for the employees for the 1920 school year. John? Yes. David? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Kenny? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Action topic M. Consideration of contract to provide student extracurricular activity drug testing services for the 1920 school year, pages 65 to 68. Um, this was the initial screening. Help was uh, significantly more expensive than uh, on the uh, precision, just a little less expensive throughout. And they, we've been, how long has Precision been doing our students? <coughs> Since we started, I'm going to say five, six years. That's the problem. Make a motion for you Precision Drug Screening for the students. Motion by Kenny, second by Jennifer, to enter into a contract with Precision to provide student extracurricular activity drug testing services Here's what we currently have, and uh, again, I can't say enough about our uh, the men that we have working in our bus maintenance and everything. Uh, but for what we're trying to do, uh, they just don't feel like this is safe to be uh, lifting machine vehicles up on. They'd like to go to a four-post lift. Uh, we have two quotes. We have 
Love Sales and Service out of Shady Point, and they'll also do the removal and the installation, or we can just buy the uh, lift from O'Reilly's, and we just went off Lum's numbers for removal and installation, uh, so we know it would cost at least that. Uh, and then uh, Lum Sales and Service, they just do this full time. That, that's their job, and so we just felt better with them doing the installation as well. So uh, I would certainly recommend going with the Lums for the four post lift for the bus barn. I make a motion we go with Lums for the four post vehicle lift for the bus barn. Second. Motion made by David Second and John to go with Lums for the uh, four post vehicle lift for the bus barn. David? Yes. John? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Kenny? Yes. And Susan? Yes. Action topic O. Oh, consideration of school advantage purchasing card for Adam Bochan. Superintendent for the 1920 school year, page 72. He's the only addition we'll be making, and of course, you'll be getting my back. So I, I was going to say. I asked him if I could take it with me, but he kind of <laughs> nixed that idea. Uh, <laughs> First time he told you no. <laughs> it is, sure. So uh, we, we would like to go ahead and start moving forward with that, so be ready to go. Consideration of renewal of lease agreement with First National Bank of Stewart for the LED lighting for the 1920 school year. This is the same lease agreement we just approved. It was just the beginning of the new fiscal year, and so we need to go ahead and approve that so we can move forward. Make a motion we renew the lease agreement with First National Bank for the 1920 school year. Motion made by John, second by David, to uh, renew the lease agreement with First National Bank of Stewart for the LED lighting for the 1920 school year. John? Yes. David? Yes. Yes. Kenny? Yes. And Susie, yes. Action topic Q. Consideration of revision of the following policy. Leave policy. things so that it makes it a little more clear and um, this was our good time that we made it for some yes I got you. so sick leave did not change um, if we go to the um, personal leave First of all, um, you always get stuck trying to make decisions on uh, personal leave that doesn't qualify for personal leave and then that becomes unpaid leave and you have a lot of questions there. Uh, first one, DEC R1 just says that if what you're asking does not qualify for personal leave, you go to your principal. Your principal approves an unpaid leave your principal approves it then you take off but you know that 1 1 80th of your salary will be deducted from your paycheck uh, bereavement leave 
Um, we've had some cases recently of uh, pretty traumatic uh, bereavement leave, and we just had a blanket <coughs> policy that says you get three days. So I found uh, this from uh, Broken Arrow Schools, and they said in the event of the death of spouse, child, parent, or corresponding in-laws or step relatives, you can take up to five days for that in the event the death of a sister, brother, grandparent, grandchild, or corresponding in-laws or step relatives, you can have three days. And in the event of the death of an aunt or an uncle or a niece or a nephew, you can have one day. It just gives a little more clarity and gives us some, a little more leeway on uh, trying to. Where's that at? It's on the broken arrow. Broken arrow. Oh, well, that's where it's at. Okay. Here. Okay. 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 I'm sorry. I, I, had, I had Lindy going seven different directions okay. today. So. Yeah. or a child and having three days and then go back to work in front of your classroom, that, that's a tough deal. Um, and then we've added to DEC R3, we've added to the definition of um, personal business leave and that is what it really is supposed to be. Valerie's here today, so she's part of the SEA. Uh, I'll tell all of you all that um, this is a pretty strict interpretation and there might be some room for negotiations after we get the policy adopted uh, to make some changes uh, but I do think there's some things that we need to address in uh, what personal business really is um, so you can read uh, what's it what it's intended for uh, things like loan closings banking matters that their hours are kind of set in standard uh, attorneys court appearances uh, attending a school activity uh, to support your students uh, what it's not intended for is um, pleasure trips and vacations seeking other employment participating in political and social activities and performing any service for compensation. That's not what school personal business is intended for. So, um, and then uh, the other thing that we currently would be, uh, I would recommend we add, and this gets, when you define personal business and everything, uh, you'd also like to see some emergency leave. So we've tightened up some areas in that could be uh, taken advantage of or whatever, however you want to put it, but we're also giving some on some real need because you hate to see a person. So many times these things happen in multiples of two or three to the same person and you think, wow, well, you know, I wish there was something else that we could do to help them out. And so uh, I think this is a well-rounded recommendation to uh, make some areas uh, a, little, a little more restrictive for absences because it, it's important that we have our employees at work, uh, but at the same time, it addresses some needs and, and some things that we can also uh, be very beneficial for our employees as well. This would be like they had a like a flood deal or whatever. Yes, yeah. But uh, 
natural disaster, a, yeah. an injured child that's yeah. not, you know, uh, whereas in the past you'd have three personal days, you don't have any sick days, you're just out of luck. Does this mean that the board can add five days? I thought where it says allows emergency leave to be granted at the discretion of the board. However, yeah. not one back. Okay. Yes. So that would be a total of eight or a total could, of five? It could be a total of eight. Okay. Yes. So if they did have something come up that rang the board, they say, oh, that Yes. We could add up to five. Yeah, it just, like I said, it, uh, in, in one way we're being a little more restrictive, but in another way we're really trying to accommodate the real needs. Good, you're solid enough to make that thing out. So that's the antenna. I make a motion that we accept the lead policy for the 1920 revision. Revision. I'll say. I should bring my Kenny Sink and my David to accept the revisions of the following policy for Lee at the EC. Kenny? Yes. David? Yes. Don? Yes. Jennifer? Printed up and dated and everything, get you all a copy in your next month's uh, four packets so you'll see the same thing. So the teacher will be notified of the meeting when y'all yep. yep. go and Adam okay. has a meeting. They're going to their red book. So he can just blame you for all this? Well, he'll, 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 act, he'll actually have a, pop, a copy of all this at negotiations. So. to executive session. I proposed to executive session to discuss and act upon the following business pursuant to section 307B of the Open Meeting Act. Number one, discussion of resignation of Joey Odom, middle school social studies teacher, coach May 21st, 2019, page 73. Number two, discussion of resignation of Jamie Risenhuber, middle school social, social studies teacher, effective May 22nd, 2019, page 74. Number three, discussion of resignation of Don Bryant, payroll clerk, child nutrition director, effective June 30th, 2019, page 75. Number four, discussion to employ support personnel for the 1920 school year, pages 76 through 78. Number five, discussion to employ agriculture, agriculture education teacher for the 1920 school year. Number six, discussion to employ middle school social studies teacher coach for the 1920 school year. Number seven, discussion to employ middle school social studies teacher for the 1920 school year. Number eight, discussion to employ high school math teacher for the 1920 school year. Number nine, discussion to employ high school science leadership teacher for the 1920 school year. Number 10, discussion to employ payroll child nutrition clerk for the 1920 school year. Number 11, discussion of other open positions and or resignations for the 1920 school year. Number 12, discussion of authorizing superintendent Monty Guthrie to extend employment for any vacant positions for the 1920 school year. Make a motion we convene into executive session. Awesome. Motion made by John, seconded by Jennifer. To convene in executive session at 7.48 p.m. John. Sessions were uh, David Huggins, uh, John Turntine, Jenny Whitson, Jennifer Turner, Susan White, my votes were taken. Monty Guthrie and Adam Beauchamp uh, were also present. Uh, Okay. I make the motion we accept the resignations of Joy Odom, Jamie Rice, and Hooper, and Don Bryan. I'll second. Motion made by John, seconded by Jennifer, to accept the resignation of Joy Odom, Jamie Rice, and Hooper, and Don Bryant. Uh, John? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. Kenny? Yes. And Susie? Yes. I make the motion to employ support personnel for the 1920 school. That's listed. <laughs> I was made by Kenny, seconded by Jennifer to employ the support personnel for the 1920 school year as listed. Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. John? Yes. David? Yes. And Susie? Yes. I have a motion that we employ Cody Dawson for the agriculture education teacher for the 1920 school year. Second. I 
question made by Kenny, seconded by John, to employ Cody Dawson for an agricultural teacher, education teacher for the 1920 school year. Kenny? Yes. John? Yes. David? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Make a motion we employ Tyler Guthrie to fill the social studies teacher slash coach for the middle school for the 1920 school year. Second. Motion made by John, seconded by David to employ Tyler Guthrie, the middle school social studies teacher coach for the 1924 year. John? Yes. David? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Make a motion to employ Hannah Hurst, the middle school social studies teacher for the 1920 school year. Second. Question made by Kenny, second, uh, made, uh, second by Jennifer to employ Hannah Hurst, uh, middle school social social studies teacher for the 1920 school year. Kenny? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. David? Yes. John? Yes. And Susie? Yes. I make a motion to employ Kaylin Colwell's math teacher, high school math teacher, 1920 school year. Second. Motion made by David, seconded by John to employ Caitlin Colwell, high school math teacher for the 1920 school year. David? Yes. John? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Yes. I make a motion that we employ Jessica Morris for the high school science slash leadership leadership teacher for the 1920 school year. I'll second. Motion made by Jennifer, seconded by Kenny to employ Jessica Morris, high school science leadership teacher for the 1920 school year. Jennifer? Yes. Kenny? Yes. David? Yes. John? Yes. And Susie? Yes. I make a motion that we employ Melissa Pemberton to fill the payroll child nutrition clerk for the 1920. Second. Motion made by John, seconded by David to employ Melissa Pemberton, payroll child nutrition clerk for the 1920 school year. John? Yes. David? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. Kenny? Yes. Susie? Yes. Number 11, no action. Make a motion we authorize the superintendent to extend employment for any vacant positions for the 1920 school year. Second. Motion made by Kenny, seconded by John. To authorize uh, superintendent, the superintendent to extend employment for any vacant, uh, vacant positions for the 1920 school year. Kenny? Yes. John? Yes. David? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And Susie? Yes. Okay. Any new business? No new business. Make motion to adjourn. Second.